Shalom. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and to all the brothers out here preaching the truth. I want to say Shalom. So, this is a Matazah from Chicago GMS camp. Coming back to you with another lesson. The name of this lesson is going to be entitled, My Mailman Avoids Me Now. My Mailman Avoids Me Now. So, <clears throat> every time he sees me, <laughs> he's always darting or going in the uh, opposite direction. Uh, I think he changed his... Uh, his uh, pick up locations and time so he can avoid me. And the funny thing about it is, you know, before this truth, I was very cordial with him. All right. But I'm uh let's go here real quick before we get started. It says, um, Proverbs twenty eight one, it says, The wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So I'm gonna talk about why uh he fleed. Because he was kind of exposed in his wickedness. And uh, we're going to talk about it. So anyway, prior to the truth, you know, I was really uh, pretty friendly with this Edomite mailman. He was a cool dude as far as I, at that time, you know, I thought. Um, we talked about family, work, recreation, just like most people. Um, he had a meth head girl, uh, baby mama, who was keeping his kids from him, so... I was encouraging him to fight for his parental rights and all that kind of stuff. Things that I wouldn't do today. I just say, hey, you know, you do you. Do you. But um, so this, the conversation we had that led to him fleeing every time he see me um, stemmed around the 4th of July of uh, 2020. So I had started coming into the truth. Well, I came into the truth in May of uh, 2020. And I started consuming every video out there from every camp. You know, there was no, I didn't know anything about who was going off or anything. I just was trying to get get this word, right? Trying to get as much as word as possible. Um, I was rocking fringes on every one of my clothes. Um, just, I mean, I laugh at it now. I got rid of like $1,500 worth of clothes, just nice clothes that, it was mixed fabric, and I was getting rid of everything. And um, like I said, I, I didn't know any better. But anyway, so this was right after the 4th of July of uh, 2020. And so I see him, and he says, hey, how was your fort? And I was like, it was good. It was good. What did you do? So I'm like, I didn't do anything. He was like, no, you didn't do nothing? I said, no. Nope. He was like, you had to do something, right? I'm like, no. He's like, why not? I'm like, wow. This, this, this is what they do, though. I'm like, I don't celebrate the 4th, right? He was like, you don't celebrate the 4th? Why? I was like, I just don't, right? So then he's like, it's got to be a reason. So I was just like, fuck it. Hey, listen, man. I was like, where was my people on the 4th of July in 1776? Where were they? They was in slavery. And immediately, immediately, the guy rolls his eyes. He's shaking his head. And he's like, you guys got to get over that. You guys are still living in the past. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. No remorse whatsoever. It's just like, hey, just get over it. You know what I'm saying? You guys are just still bringing it up. You know, it's over. It's done with. That's how his mentality was. So he basically, you know, after I was like, it's over and done with. I was like, so you're telling me that if somebody kicked the door in and, you know, rape, robbed and murdered your family and took everything they had and, you know. And then profited off them, off them for 400 years, over 400 years, that would be okay. So, he, like I said, he didn't give any any credence to that at all. Uh, then he tried to apply that I was un American. 
He said, aren't you American? Oh, of course I'm American. What are you talking about? He was like, but he was trying to imply that if you don't celebrate the 4th of July, you're un-American. You know, maybe as if you were some kind of terrorist or something. Then he told me, he says, think of it this way. If it wasn't for our Independence Day, you could still be a slave. If it wasn't for Independence Day, you could still be a slave. Which sounds really stupid, you know, because... Slavery ended in 1865, and independence was 1776. So that's almost 90 years after the fact, as if the Civil War didn't happen, right? So his argument was damn dumb right there. So then he's like, well, your own people sold you into slavery. You know, Africans sold Africans into slavery. So I was like, no. I said, we're not African. That's the lie. That's the lie that your people told, right? Because we're not African. Africans sold the children of Israel into slavery, right? So let's go, Joel 3. I'm going to go with 4. Start at 4. And it reads, yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border." Okay, removing them out of their land. Who was he talking to? He's talking to Tyre and Zidon, right? That's what he. That's what he's talking to. So these are Africans, right? So that cut them right there, right? Proving that the children of Israel were not Africans because they lied to you and tell you that Africans sold Africans into slavery. But that's what they do. That's what they do. They lie. Psalms 58. 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Doing what? Speaking lies. Right? So, once I told them, alright, that Africans sold the children of Israel into slavery, he tells me that we're all the children of God. This is what he says. We're all the children of God. I said, no, we're not. So I hit him with Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. Now keep in mind, I'm just using my phone and these precepts are coming to me right on the spot. And after these, Adam, also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Right? So all the people come from Adam and the people who God hath chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou make yet yeah, thou madest Salaki the world for our sakes. As for the other people which also come of Adam, Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So I actually showed him that. Right? Then later, though, I didn't show him this, but here's another Isaiah 40 and 15. I didn't show him this particular one. But look what it says. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and I count it as the small dust on the balance. You see that? So that kind of goes and confirms what Second Ezra 6 and 54 said, right? So he says that we're all God's children. No, we're not all God's children. So then we had to go to Romans. Romans, the ninth chapter. 
talks about who are the Israelites and what pertains or belongs to them. Romans 9 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Right? It's about the flesh. Right? It's about the seed. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom is concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Alright, so everybody's not the children of God, right? And when you look here in the fourth, uh, let me see, not the fourth verse. When you look here in, yeah, yeah, the fourth verse. See that semicolon right behind Israelites? The semicolon lets you know that a list is coming. Okay? That's what it is. Who are Israelites? Here come the list. To whom pertaineth or belongs to the adoption, comma, glory, comma, covenants, comma. That's a list. That's what the semicolon is all about. Alright? Anyway, so we jump down to 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Immediately, he says to me, right? Immediately, he says, so what you're saying is, there's no salvation for me. Brother, I didn't even get into all of that. You know what I'm saying? So you obviously know more than you let know, you know? I said, but... Since since it sounds like you know, <laughs> you already know, well, let's hit this Revelation 13. Nine. Sound like he, he knows already. So, um, I hate when they have this little thing here. It says, uh, it reads, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the saints are patiently waiting to put those in captivity who had them in captivity and killed them with the sword, killed them with the sword. So then the next thing he says is, I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe in the Bible. Hold on, man. He just got through saying all of us was the children of God and everything else. But now, when he sees his wickedness and his people and his judgment in the Bible, he don't believe it at all. You know, he says he can't believe in a God that would choose one people over another people. Well, that's just too damn bad. Because I told you it don't matter what you believe. It's what he says. So it don't have nothing to do with anything what you think. No matter. you You can believe it or not. It don't matter. So, let's look at Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And it reads, For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that upon the face of the earth. That's just what it is. Okay. So. <clears throat> the name of this lesson. Again it was called. My mailman avoids me now. But I'm going to. Leave you with this. Let's go to Sirach. 12. And 10. Sirach 12 and 10 says. Never trust thine enemy. 
for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Okay, so never means never, right? Never trust thine enemy because we already know, you know, he's going to lie to you. He's going to do, I mean, this man, this man went from, he had about eight different lines of reasoning as to why I should celebrate the 4th of July, you know, and why he, he says my people sold me into slavery and all this other crap, right? But then at the at the end he says, "Hey, we're all the children of God." Uh, no. Nah. But then he says he doesn't believe the Bible. Well, what what is the conversation? What, what what was all that for? They ain't never gonna believe the Bible. They don't want to believe the Bible because it condemns them. All of his arguments were 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 lying. His lines of reasoning. Were all examples of his wickedness. Okay? So, just so you know, my mailman avoids me now. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom.